Welcome, welcome to the Bird's Eye View Sports Edition. This is the day after, um, and we are going to talk about the Oregon and Arizona game. Oregon hasn't won down at Arizona since 2011, and I think the last time they went there was like a 40-point loss. It was pretty bad, but Oregon goes down there, um, you know, on a four-game win streak. And Arizona, you know, is supposed to have one of the most potent offenses. So let's take a look, see what happened. All right. So we start off with uh, Arizona won the toss, and they decided that for whatever reason that they were going to start with the ball and give Oregon the ball in the second half. So it started to look like that wasn't such a bad decision. Arizona went right down the field and they're sitting here at the seven yard line. And then this play happens. Get the crowd going. First and goal. No. Destructive. Mishandled turnover. snap. And Oregon, Oregon comes DJ away with the fumble. On the no points. And look at the coaches. That body language tells you all. So. Oregon would get the ball back and they would have to punt and then they gave the ball back to arizona which drove down the field and then got stopped by the defense and then they had to kick a field goal and so it is now three to zero and this is oregon's second possession um they had a couple plays get down to the 45 and then this is what happened Hand it off to Whittington. He makes a couple of cuts, a couple people miss tackles, and he is gone. Not catching him. That's a touchdown. That makes it 7-3. to three. Arizona gets the ball back. They couldn't do anything with the ball. Oregon gets the ball back, and Bo Nix launches this ball to Hudson and he I mean that's not a touchdown but that ball Oregon was caught on the two already. yard they line three like yard line and then Go to this Bo Nix just sneaks it in right off the side and for another touchdown. touchdown Oregon Oregon gets the ball back again Bo Nix unloads it Chase Kona makes an unreal catch right here under duress that was perfect right into Chase Kona and then on the next play, well, not the, the next play, but now we're down here in the end. Oregon loads up on, you know, the, the power, the power run. Everybody knows it's coming. Watch number eight, the tight end right here. If you don't watch him, you'll miss it. He comes back across the line, handoff, goes right in. That's a tight end, a Maliki Matavalo or something like that. I can't pronounce his last name, but that's a that's a tight end rushing touchdown. All right, right here, what you have is watch these linebackers right here. They kind of miss their uh, appointments. Overcommit, and he runs right by, and he is gone. There's no catching him. That guy's fast. What you got here is Franklin making another spectacular catch over the middle. And this is uh, James, watch number 20 right here. This is our short running guy. And again, it's James, and he's in. Another rushing TD. Had a shot at him, but James strong enough to fight through it and score. And you got Nix on and another the QB Nicks sneak. So Bo Nix with the keeper scores the touchdown. Now it's, I mean, this game's already out of control. So, so it, it was uh, 28 to 13 at the end of the half. Uh, Oregon gets the ball back, of course, and then they make it 35 to 13. Um, this is. At this point, the score is out of control, and Arizona is basically um, one-dimensional for the most part, and this is what happens. Been around the pack before. Wow, that one Just, tipped and then intercepted. I'm not sure if that was tipped or not, but Oregon so comes down with the, the interception. And it's Jalil Florence. Oh, yeah. That was... 
And then good old Bucky. Watch number zero on this run. He's going to get this ball. This is a spectacular run and vision on Bucky's run here. That was a jam. Only the third incompletion for Knicks. So they'll run it with Irving. And Irving's going. And Irving's home. Gone for the touchdown. Great run. Great run. And then here. Now... This is what happens when you have a superb running game and a very effective pass attack. This is going to be all Bo Nix, so watch the quarterback right here. Holds the ball, runs around the outside, and he Bo is gone. Third touchdown of the, night. For the dagger. Untouched. For the dagger of the day. That is the final I score the for Oregon at 49-16. Here's cleanup time touchdown for Arizona. Nice pass and catch for the touchdown. That is the game. Final score, 49-22. Well, five straight for the Ducks. Over 40 points in each of the five wins. And Oregon gets their first win down in the desert since 2011. That is a big win for Oregon down there. Uh, they really needed that. So... All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. So if you look at some of these stats, you have Oregon for 580 total yards, and um, and that was 274 passing. Uh, Nick's had 265. He was 20 of 25, and his average was 10.6 yards a pass play. That's a pretty significant average. Um you're not you're unlikely to lose games if you're if you're doing that with no interceptions he didn't have any td passes but uh he did have some long throws um look at some of these catches 42 30 27 12 17 13 8 10 like most of these guys had a lot of catches and yeah this is the thing is it's hard to stand out as an oregon wide receiver um, and the only way you can do that is to make catches that, um, uh, that some, some people aren't going to make, but you're going to make those because these guys are only getting two or three, four catches, but they're at, you know, they're getting 60, 60 yards, 40 yards, 34 yards, 30 yards, 20 yards, but there was 10 different receivers that caught passes. I mean, that's a wide distribute, uh, wide distribution there we go that's a wide distribution of wide receivers some teams are only thrown to three or four guys oregon is really spreading that ball out and makes it really hard to key in on one individual it makes it extremely hard to stop him and even in the rushing you know you have six rushers including bo nix and those guys are averaging 15 8 7 6 4.5 yards average for you know a team average is 7.5 yards of carry but here's the real key is seven rushing touchdowns in this game. I don't know if that's a record for Oregon, but that's pretty darn close. That's pretty impressive ground game there. And, um, I mean, when you're averaging 7.5 yards of carry, teams are, you, you, you know, you're not going to lose because every other touch basically is a first down, right? And then you you average that 7.5 yards rushing with the 11.9 yard uh, receiving, and that's a pretty significant. Uh, that's that's pretty significant. You moving the ball, and so you can see Oregon scored a touchdown in the first quarter, three in the second quarter, three in the third quarter, and then in cleanup time when when Bo Nix was out, they didn't score. They moved the ball a little bit with Ty Thompson, but. Not very much. On the very last drive, they might have could have scored, uh, but instead, with like a minute and a half left, they just kneeled down in the game, make sure nobody got hurt. Uh, I didn't see any injuries that were people were coming off the field for Oregon, so that was really good. This was a very clean game. Uh, penalty yards. Um, let's see. I don't can't remember if that's tracked on here. So Oregon at one point only had four penalties for like 40 yards and then i think they got uh a personal foul on a on a um 
on a tackle. So I think there might only been five penalties. Oh, maybe that's some team stats. Yeah, penalties. Okay, so six penalties for 56 yards. That's a significant improvement from 14 penalties and 100 and some 136 yards from last game. That was a huge point of inference. Um, and I don't. I believe there was only one of these penalties was a pre-snap penalty. And that's a very big improvement for your offense. I think there was only one pre-snap snap penalty. All the rest of them were, uh, you know, a couple of pass interferences, a couple of uh, holding calls maybe. I can't remember what the... So I know there was two pass interferences. I know there was the one uh, personal foul call. And I can't remember what the other three penalties were. They were fairly minor, though. They weren't anything super significant or any, any uh, whether in significant parts of the game. So with that, I mean, man, Oregon played a great game down there. And now they look and they come back and you have undefeated UCLA coming to Austin Stadium. Uh, Oregon is on a 5-0 and I think UCLA is 6-0. Um, and I expect both of those teams to be probably number 11 and 12 when the rankings come out, or they should be very close to that. It should be a top 15 matchup. Uh, that game's at Autzen Stadium, and uh, it's definitely going to be a good one. Uh, UCLA took down Utah, and um, UCLA kind of had control of that game all game. It wasn't really like they took it away from Utah. They beat Utah squarely, so it's going to be... An interesting game because UCLA is, it, it, again, their run defense isn't quite as good as uh, Oregon's run game. And their passing game is significantly better than Oregon's pass defense. So it'll be another game like the Arizona game where those guys come out and try to throw the ball. But if you can't run against Oregon, then you become one-dimensional and Oregon starts clamping down, especially, you know, if they can get a couple of score leads, like what happened with Arizona is that that um, that fumble changed that game, changed the momentum, gave Oregon a two-score lead, and it was over from there. If Oregon can get UCLA behind in the scoreboard and they feel pressured to uh, throw the ball all over, which is they're likely to do anyway... Uh, Oregon, you know, should win that game. This is going to be a very tight game. I don't see this game being a blowout at all. I see this game coming down to the fourth quarter execution. But I think with how Bo Nix is playing right now and UCLA's defense not really stopping anybody, that's going to be the key, is UCLA will not be able to stop Oregon. And I think Oregon's D will slow down UCLA enough to for Oregon to come away with a victory in the fourth quarter. Um, and just as a side note, you know, I know there was a lot of talk at the beginning of the season of, of Morio Cristobal having such a way better season than Oregon, especially after that loss to Georgia. But if we take a look at the Miami Hurricanes, they are two and three with three straight losses. They are fifth in the ACC Coastal. Uh, and so Miami, thank you so much for taking Mario Cristobal away from Oregon. We very much appreciate it. Oregon, uh, I know that everybody is such a fan of Mario Cristobal being with the Miami Hurricanes and you guys just being a destitute team from here on out. It makes us all feel good on the West Coast. But with that, we're out of here. Much love all. Go Ducks. And we'll see you in two weeks as uh, both UCLA and Oregon have a bye week. But I'll probably record one more just uh, coming up to that game. But here we go. Much love all. We are out of here.